Biomutant is quite possibly the most average game I've ever played. It's just like every other open world game or sandbox game you've played in the past 10 years. There is nothing about this game that stands out. Well, except maybe the character creator, but really, that's not why you're gonna play an open world game. I just don't understand how a game that was announced four years ago could turn out like this. I mean, what were you doing all that time, creating this massive, admittedly quite beautiful world? Was that it though? You didn't think maybe we should polish the combat, or create interesting quests, or some kind of story? No, no, I guess not. So I guess now that you know the game is incredibly average, you already know that you're probably not going to want to buy it at launch, so I guess the question is, how bad is the game at, at this point? Might as well just be for entertainment purposes. But before I break it down, remember to do the things the algorithm likes. All of you know what that means. If you want to support me directly, check out my Patreon. And without further ado, let's make our first Sona in Biomutant. It's unusual that natural tunnels like this still exist. Most of them got flooded. Oh no, is the whole game gonna be like this? You fixed those, you fixed those. The Myriad tribe have heard that you have a sense of the great This is a great Stop talking! So let's talk about the gameplay first, since that's probably the only thing that's gonna keep you going through the rather bland rest of the game mechanics. Well, the bad news is, is that the combat is jank as hell. I mean, it's just not that satisfying. Pretty much all of the mechanics work, even though I've heard some reports that people have a lot of glitches with this game. I didn't have that many glitches. While the combat itself is simple, at least it's somewhat satisfying. Enemies don't feel too spongy, especially when you start upgrading the guns. The guns just completely outpace melee weapons, which is a really strange balance. I could describe it vaguely, but all you need to know is that essentially, square is your basic attack. You can use triangle to do a combo move only in a few specific ways per weapon, which is like a wung fu move. And there's also a few combos with your guns. There's also biogenetic abilities and psi powers, but I didn't really build for intellect, so they weren't particularly useful for me. And even if I did build for intellect, it seems like the most useful among them were the utility ones. Like you can cover the field with ice to make enemies slip on it, and that actually seemed to be pretty useful. But still, it seems just wholly unnecessary, but I guess it's just an additional way to play the game, so it's not necessarily bad. And that's basically it. It would be completely fine if they leaned more into a Souls type of combat, because they already have dodge rolling and parrying, the problem is the enemies themselves, which are just very poorly designed. Enemies attack you one at a time, and there's like little warning sign over their head when they're about to attack. The problem is there's no sound effect when they're about to attack. A lot of the wind up animations are basically non-existent, so there's like no telegraphing. And the consequences for getting hit sometimes are non-existent. By the time you played this game for about 10 hours, you're never going to parry ever again because it's just a waste of time. You want to get through combat as fast as possible. So there's absolutely no reason to parry, even though you do get rewarded pretty heavily for parrying, which is basically a free huge juggle combo that'll probably finish off whatever enemy you're using it against. And in the case of giant enemies, you can basically stun them and just wail on them for free as well. Somehow, that's still slower than just shooting them. And I can't overestimate how broken the guns are with the Super Wung Fu. Basically how that works is, when you do three combos, though it can't be the same combo twice in a row, you can still alternate between two combos to do it. You get this super mode where basically you just mash a button and you do a cool move. Well, if you decide to just shoot them, you get infinite shots with like a fixed rate of fire, meaning that if you have a shotgun, you can shoot it like three times as fast in the super mode. And another limitation of the guns was supposed to be reloading. Well, in Super Wung Fu, you have an infinite magazine size. So you can literally just jump through the air and use your extremely high damage weapon and just spam shots and kill everyone. 
This is basically what I did for the last five hours that I ended up playing the game. It completely breaks the combat, but the combat isn't that satisfying to begin with. Because here's the big problem. One, the sound effects are very weak sounding. Like, they just don't sound satisfying at all. Second, half the time your weapons feel like they don't have any impact at all. Enemies often will just super armor straight through your attacks, and not just the big guys, even your average enemy type will do it. Unless you have an elemental damage type like lightning that can paralyze them, they will completely ignore your hits and just smack you in the face, and it is very annoying. It makes the slower weapon types much less useful. And I don't know, just in general, it just has this jankness to it, where since there's no lock-on system, you're kind of just vaguely pointing your analog stick in the direction of an enemy, and it works the vast majority of the time, but just sometimes attacks don't link together the way they're supposed to, and sometimes the game doesn't treat certain basic combo attacks as the correct combo attacks for your Wung Fu moves. And honestly, it's the type of thing where I could attempt to explain it in more detail, but the combat just doesn't feel that fun. And that's extremely important, considering that's like the entire hook of the game. This game doesn't offer you that much more. I mean, okay, it's this giant open world game, of course, as if we don't have enough of those already. And it's the type of open world that sort of borrows a little bit from Breath of the Wild and a little bit from Witcher 3 but doesn't focus in either direction, and also doesn't do either very well at all. It sort of has like that huge sprawling world with different areas being like different elemental type zones with their own unique problems that you need like the gimmick of that area to solve, much like Breath of the Wild or even like the older 3D Zelda games, probably more so. But of course, also the map is littered with all of these little outposts, and this is probably the worst part of the game. In the very beginning of the game, you choose to be good or evil, of course, you know, like Infamous. There's basically no reason to be some good and some bad. You're probably just going to go all good or all evil, like every other game that has binary good and evil choice. No matter which one you pick, you have to do these tribe wars. Now, the Tribe Wars is an extremely repetitive major quest line where you help your chosen tribe, you go to some outpost, you do one of three or four specific outpost variations that slightly change up the objectives of how to take it over, but essentially you're just beating up a bunch of other furry dudes like you do for the entire rest of the game. And then you conquer that outpost, and then you conquer the next one. The only good part about this is that if you're doing a good playthrough, you can choose to end the war after conquering the second tribe, thank God. So at least the padding isn't that bad. But that just felt like this weird element that just existed there to add more fights to the game, because if you've seen ACG's review, he sort of exaggerates it a bit, but yes, this game actually doesn't have that many fights for an action RPG. I mean, generally, when you go to a location, you'll get into a fight with a handful of enemies, but that's it. Unless you explore, like, a mini underground area, for the most part, a location will have one set of enemies there that you'll probably beat in less than a minute. And then you'll explore for, like, the next five to ten minutes if it's a big area. So it has this really weird balance between looting shit and fighting that just feels wrong. You're going to waste so much time looting because they made crafting a major component of this game. And again, another game concept that has been overused to death. And the crafting is very useful, so you probably shouldn't ignore it. The best thing I can say about it, at least, is that it's simple, but it's not fun. It reminds me of the times in Destiny where I would just dismantle, you know, the hundreds of blues and 90% of the purples. That's basically what you're going to do in this game. There's so few loot that is level appropriate or stat appropriate to what you're currently wearing. So you're just gonna spend so much time dismantling and then just crafting your own crap that's better than anything you can pick up. But the Witcher 3 part of the game, and again, it's probably a stretch to even really compare it to Witcher 3, but, because it's much more like the recent Assassin's Creed games, where have, they have these extremely lazy side quests which is, you know, you basically, you go somewhere and you kill the guy, or you go somewhere and you grab the MacGuffin, you know? But it's even worse in this game than in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, because there is so much fucking dialogue 
in this game, even though this game kind of feels like a kid's game and would be an okay kid's game, I guess. But to be frank, the games I grew up with were much better than this. Blah, 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 you could say nostalgia, whatever. But honestly, if you are a kid and you're playing this, do you really want to sit through like 10 lines of dialogue for every single mission? It's insane. Which again, brings in the narration. This is something other people have talked about, of course. But the narration is very obnoxious. You know, there's like a storybook narrator that narrates everything in the game, and he never shuts up. He feels like he has to say something every two minutes. And yes, there is an option to reduce his talking in the options menu. It does like nothing. He still has so many scripted dialogue lines that just reducing the random dialogue barely alters it at all. So it feels like such a waste of time when you already know that all the quests are the same shit. You know, you go to the objective marker and you do the thing and then you come back and you get whatever shitty reward you get, right? So why does the game feel like it has to waste your fucking time where you have to skip all these lines of dialogue? I don't understand why they give the furry dudes three lines of dialogue, then it prompts you with a choice that doesn't matter. Three more lines, then it prompts you with a choice. It's like, even Mass Effect didn't do this shit. Why is this game doing this? How is a kid supposed to pay attention to this? So obviously, the Witcher part of the game is just kind of a complete failure. What about the Breath of the Wild part? Well, yeah, I mean, again, it's only a very kind of vague comparison, but you have this huge, sprawling world. Each section of the world is a different biome, and you get some kind of gimmicky item thing to help you defeat the boss of that area and, in a couple cases, just explore the area itself. Like, the first one you go to is an area that has no oxygen in it, so you get into this giant mech suit, and you have to stay inside or you'll, you know, obviously asphyxiate. So it's kind of fun running around the mech and smashing stuff, even though it's pretty underpowered, to be honest. But the area is just a giant wasteland with, you know, occasional loot caves around. You know, it's not really that interesting. It's not any different from any of the other areas mechanically, other than the fact that you just have to stay in a giant mech until you find a loot cave, then you jump out, grab the loot, and get back in the mech. Of course, if you want to skip all the optional content, which, yeah, sure, why not? The game scales to your level anyway, and the boss fights are pretty much scripted gimmick fights. You could just go straight to the boss, Fight the big animal dude with your mech, and then move on to the next thing. Then the next area is a water world, where you need like a jet ski to get through the waters. And you use the jet ski to beat that boss. Which, at least the three-headed shark, the second phase wasn't a gimmick fight, thankfully. And the third area, you get a mount, and... That one actually is pretty standard. Because you already have mounts in this game to make traveling less annoying. And that one just gives you a better mount, so good on that area. And so you can see the issues here. Everything about this game is repetitive. Everything about this game is something that you've seen before, you've played before. It's just crazy to me this game was announced almost four years ago. And they took that time and just didn't make anything interesting. I just don't understand. Apparently this was being developed by X Just Cause developers, which Just Cause actually, that probably explains a lot. Just Cause games are extremely repetitive games, even if they have some really fun mechanics. Which, some fun mechanics, I wish this game had that, but it explains the repetitive open world design at least. I just think this game would be so much better if the open world was shrunk to about a quarter of the size that it is now, and they just made it dense and like full of unique experiences and more enemy types and they tighten the combat. Why does every open world developer think they need to make this massive fucking world? Especially if you only have like a middleware budget, which clearly this game, you know, didn't have the highest budget in the world. Why would you make a game like this? That's my serious question, you know? Why would you leave the combat as jank as it feels, dude? The combat is like the most important thing in the game, and it just feels, you know, okay, it's average, like the rest of the game. I don't know, it's just, it feels like games like this piss me off more than bad games, you know? Because there's some potential in a game like this. I think the character creator is really cool, because your stats actually affect what your creature looks like. And so, that's a neat idea. 
and I just like the whole like hack and slash and gun combat it just wasn't thought out very well since enemies are stupid so you can kind of just stand back and shoot them to death but just the really cool looking open world itself would have been awesome in a better game but no you know so we're stuck with this which is a perfectly fine game it's not the worst game I played this year definitely not and again I don't know if I can even say I'm disappointed, I didn't really have expectations. I knew almost nothing about this game when I bought it. I saw the reveal trailer back in 2017, and then I'm like, well, you know, I'll probably play that and make a review. That, that was the extent of it. And so yeah, THQ Nordic, I'm fucking disappointed, I guess, out of principle. And I can't really recommend anybody buy this game at full price. It shouldn't be at full price. The only justification for it being at full price, I think, is just how huge the game is. But if it's all just copy-paste assets and half-assed quests, and the game is buggy and jank, it shouldn't be $60 regardless. I don't care. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe check it out at a deep sale, as ACG would say. And, yeah, I guess it's time to just move on to whatever the next thing is. You fixed those f Hey guys, thanks for watching. Yeah, I know. It's like two weeks without an upload. Honestly, it's just a combination of bad time management and life getting in the way sometimes, you know. So, I should be back to a normal schedule now. The video I was supposed to release before this, uh, which was a uh, Patreon review, which was uh, Battletoads vs. Battletoads, which actually I think will be pretty interesting. That should be coming out maybe by the end of the week, at least I hope. And then, I don't know what I'll do after that, because I don't think anything notable is coming out anytime soon, but maybe I'll check something out. If not, I'll probably just cover some childhood game or something. Like, I've been meaning to talk about Ratchet and Clank for a long time, so maybe I'll finally do the review on that. I also want to talk about Deus Ex at some point, especially since you guys voted that a while ago. But yeah, that's probably about it for now. I'll see you next time, guys.